couple of years ago, I was invited to go skiing in one of the most remote places in all of Japan, way, way, way up north to a tiny frozen island called Rishiri. Now, Rishiri is best known for producing some of Japan's most expensive sea urchin, or uni, which sells to fancy restaurants in Kyoto and Tokyo for about $300 per kilo. But it's got another, more secretive side to it as well. The island is basically one big mountain, and once winter descends and the snow clouds roll in, it becomes home to some of Japan's most exciting and most remote skiing. There's just one catch. The island is two hours by ferry from Wakanai, Japan's northernmost city, and it's notoriously tricky to get to. The day we arrived in Wakanai, all the crossings to Rishiri were cancelled because of the wind and the waves, and no one was quite sure when the ferries would start up again. And so we waited in the weather-beaten port city, fingers crossed and hoping that the ferries would be running again the next day. It's 5.55 in the morning, and we've just received word that the ferry's available, so it looks like we're going to Rishiri. Aren't we? <laughs> that is my pal Francesco, who was joining me on the trip to Rishiri, and after our day in a hotel in Wakanai, he was as excited as I was by the news that the ferries were running again. So we packed up all our gear and marched over to the ferry terminal, where we boarded the extremely luxurious ferry to Rishiri. In summer, the ferry is packed with day trippers on the hunt for sea urchin, but in winter, it was completely deserted. There were five of us on a ferry for 500, rolling across the moody grey sea. We've made it finally onto the ferry to Rishiri. It's very windy, very choppy outside. Big waves, lots of spray. Chances out of 10 we're gonna make it? No. None. No way. <laughs> Despite Francesco's less than optimistic predictions, we got to Rishiri without even needing the sick bags that were scattered throughout the cabin. We've made it onto Rishiri. First steps. We dropped off our gear at Rera Mosir, one of the only hotels open for winter, and we spent the day exploring what felt like a ghost town. Most of the restaurants and hotels on Rishiri were shuttered, and many of the islanders had left to escape the cold. But for us, the cold weather and the fresh snow was what we were there for, and meant perfect conditions for skiing. After visiting the local hot spring for a relaxing bath, we returned back to the hotel for a slap-up dinner of local fish and sake. Finally, we met Toshi Watanabe, the owner of the hotel and our guide for the next few days, who came armed with a map of Rishiri and photos of all of his favorite lines to ski. <laughs> Rishiri is an outlier in the otherwise gentle landscape of northern Hokkaido. The island is almost perfectly circular and in its centre is the mountain, 1700 metres tall with an almost infinite number of lines to choose from depending on the weather conditions. And because the island is so compact, nowhere is more than a 30 minute drive away along the island's one main ring road. There's such an abundance of terrain that even with the island's temperamental weather, there's pretty much always somewhere to ski. So after our long journey from Tokyo and our night stuck in Wakanai, all that was to do was just that. Get out on the mountain and go skiing. <laughs> Finally on the road, we've had, what do you reckon, five, ten centimetres of time? Yeah, at least that, yeah. Fresh fresh snowfall, despite none being predicted. And now the sun's coming out. I think Rishiri loves us. Okay, so we definitely cheated a bit with the ski touring and used snowmobiles to get through the first four kilometers of the approach. It's definitely not the quietest way to get around, definitely not the most environmentally friendly, but it did cut about an hour off the climb. 
And after about 10 or 15 minutes of towing, we got off the snowmobiles, slapped the skins on the bottom of our skis and started climbing properly. Skins on, now the real work begins. We've got about three hours climb from currently where we are at 350 meters up to about a thousand meters up the east side of the island, just above a dam. Beautiful weather, fresh snow on the ground. We were worried yesterday that it'd be very windy, very icy, but uh, looks like Rishiri's given us another treat. Being guided by Naoki-san up front and Toshiya-san at the back. We're climbing for about an hour now. We're about 650, 700 meters up, about 300 to the top. Weather's been excellent. View has been sublime out of this world. I can't believe we're able to see so far. See all the way to Hokkaido, mainland Hokkaido, 20 kilometers away. You can see all the way to Sakhalin, northern Russia, way up north. It's amazing. And uh, just hoping the sunlight holds so we can uh, have a really, really good ski down as well. We're here at about 1,000, 1,100 meters and enjoying the ski down. Francesco's just cut a beautiful line down the mountain. Ah, really excited for this one. Hi, Ikimasu. Right, Francesco, what's about to happen? We ski to the sea. Completing your life playing lifelong goal. After this, it's all downhill. Okay. All like there, but it's my <laughs> one. We've just come down from our final run on Rishiri. Second day of skiing, fourth day on the island. Man, I'm gonna miss this place. The snow has been fantastic. The weather has been fantastic. All the people we've met here have just been lovely. Our guides, Toshiya-san and Naoki have been brilliant. Would heartily recommend uh, you stay with them and go guiding with them if you come here. 
just being spoiled for choice. It's been really special being able to see over to Wakanai, being able to see far, far north to Sakhalin. Apparently the visibility is about 130 kilometers today. Yeah, it's just been a brilliant experience and I cannot recommend coming to Rishiri enough. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>